Hey, I'm going to talk to you about a project that we call the Deep Banding Project. If the rest of the crowd wants to join me, that's cool too. I feel like I've got my back to half of you. Anyways, as we talked about at the soil pit earlier, and if you looked really closely at the depth of topsoil there, really only had about eight inches of topsoil that we're dealing with here in uh, just outside of Lethbridge. So one of the issues that we have both in dealing with how do we get all the fertilizer down we need at the time of seeding to conserving that soil so it doesn't blow away. It becomes an issue. So we've learned over the years that banding is, is a really good option. There's a lots of benefits. Earlier today, Tammy talked about banding is a, a good way to help with weed management because we're not fertilizing the weeds. So trends are changing, farms are getting bigger. Guys are really concerned about logistics as opposed to putting the fertilizer where it needs to be. Also, we've moved towards zero tillage for many, many years now. And what happens there is we're no longer mixing the soil. We're putting down all of the crop residues on top. The mobile nutrients are beginning to stratify. They stratify in a natural environment in the grasslands that made these soils. So that's a natural thing. It's not something that, that we necessarily caused, but we did, but we still have to deal with it. Some of, what are the, some of our immobile nutrients, you guys? Phosphorus. Phosphorus, yeah. The other ones? I'm looking for two others because they're in this trial. Okay. Yes, potassium's another one. And copper, because she read the sign. Yes, <laughs> made yes, made the signs, even better. So those are the three nutrients. So we don't really have a lot of potassium issues here in southern Alberta. Typically, our soils are really quite high test, you know, 600, 700 pounds an acre type thing. So I'm not so concerned about that. What I really care about here is phosphorus. Copper is another one that really, you know, this, this trial is being done up north in, in the piece. They have some more copper deficiency type issues. Typically, we don't see a lot of copper deficiencies here in southern Alberta. Regardless, if you're going to do a deep banding uh, approach to things, then in a sense, you might as well consider all of your mobile nutrients. So what we've studied this year in three different crops, peas, wheat, and canola, is what if we put all of our immobile nutrients down once every three years? So really, you're putting three times as much fertilizer down, but we're also going to deep band it. We're going to put it five or six inches deep. What do you guys think about that? Is that a crazy idea? Not necessarily. It might be. So FOSS could be tied up because we're putting a high concentration in one location? Is that what you're thinking? Or? Okay, that might be an advantage. So what if you got a really good deal on FOSS and you could buy a, a three years worth and put it in the soil all at once? Potential advantage, eh? Any other advantages you could think of? What about logistics? Yep, so you, have, you don't have to fertilize as often, so then you can spend more time seeding. I think a lot of those things are driving decisions. Did Ryan leave already? Uh, yeah, he did too. So one of the things that I see as farm sizes are changing, folks are really concerned about not having to fill up the fertilizer tanks. So, you know, you can only go 50 acres, you gotta stop and fill. That adds a lot of time to seeding. A lot of the studies that we've seen too, also show how important it is to get your seeding done quickly and as early as possible. So if we can improve on any logistical efficiencies, then absolutely that's a great thing. What about just conditions in general? So if you could go in and deep band your, your, your foss when the soils are moist and, and easily workable, that's, that's something I think else that we could do. Any other issue with phosphorus we have sometimes? You never burnt your crop with phosphorus ever? Nobody? Okay, well, seedling safety is an issue. We do tend to put a lot of our phosphorus with the seed. And I think sometimes we're getting into, into conditions where we're actually uh, hurting that seed. The, the flip side is there, there's another thing that's good about phosphorus with the seed. You guys are just asleep today. Okay, you've heard of the pop-up effect? No? You guys in agriculture? So, so that's, um, 
that's that benefit of having some phosphorus right close to the seed because early season there's just it's you know not readily doesn't have a big root system not readily available so having a little bit phosphorus close because it's immobile helps get that seed going and a little bit more vigorous in the spring so then you know those kind of sum up the potential benefits uh, drawbacks are well you know it's it, in a sense it's a bit of a deep tillage type thing so in this case we use just our stealth openers on nine and a half inch rows and we we ripped her down about five or six inches and it definitely created a, a, a bit of a tillage effect and you know that can sometimes be concerning to folks that are diehard zero tillers I grew up in the zero till era so tillage is almost like a swear word for me let's um when we when we first did this test we were actually did multiple soil samples from zero to three inches so normally folks might do zero to six more often zero to twelve we did zero to three three to six and then six to twelve and we found very clearly that phosphorus was stratified in the zero to three so anything below zero to three uh, were really quite um, deficient in phosphorus so in particular this soil for whatever reason in the history that it's been is quite low in phosphorus so where if you're doing a good job on your phosphorus management you've got good healthy soils you might not even see a yield effect of phosphorus period on the flip side we've had studies under irrigation where we're not seeing maximum yields until we start bumping our phosphorus levels to over 60 pounds an acre in this case we were lucky if we had 20 pounds of phosphorus and we did see a, a really big stratification system so now we're in year three of this study and the data doesn't really matter until year three because you're not really comparing apples to apples so we've got plots where we did the deep banding and then no fertilizer after that and then we're comparing that to shallow banding of copper phosphorus and potassium and now we're on year three so it's really the time that we're going to get the data that will sort of confirm whether it's as comparable or better or worse than just our typical shallow banding what do you think we're seeing around here in the results? Take a guess. Not the most exciting visual types of plots, but if you look between these two plots here, and I'd like you guys to come take a good look and tell me if you see a difference between the two. Yeah. Trust your instinct, right? Which plot looks better here? That one, noticeable difference, right? So I, when I first came out here, I was like, oh man, I have nothing interesting to show you guys. Now I have this beautiful color difference. So this is the deep banded phosphorus treatment. That's three years after we put the fertilizer down and we're still seeing a nice deep green rich uptake. So, yeah, I, any questions? What do you think if we say saw no yield effects, everything's the same, whether we shallow banded every year or we deep banded every three years, would no difference be a good result? That'd be an okay result, wouldn't it? it would prove something anyway. Yeah. So then guys can consider actually doing that. If there's no risk of loss, and I can tell you that in this case, at all of the sites we at so far, but keep in mind we still have this last really important year of data to pick up on is are we seeing a yield reduction? And no, we have not yet. So in two years we haven't. Remember, we put three three times as much phosphorus down the first year though, so it's almost unfair for year one and year two compared to just the regular amount each given year. So the funny thing is though here in Lethbridge we're seeing a yield advantage uh, in both years on most of the crops that were deep banded. I'm not 100% convinced it's all fertility related because we've had two years of significant drought. Sometimes I have seen that where a deep banding loosens up the soil and allows moisture to come up from depth. I think we might have seen that effect just a little bit. So what was the three years worth? That, that one? Where's Mikey? We, I think we put down about 20 pounds P205 for the one times rate. And the question? For the three. Oh, right there. So we would have put 30 pounds a year for the shallow banding and 90 all at once deep banding. So some interesting results from 2019, so that was last year. And this is actually statistically significant only at the Farming Smarter site 
Uh, the other site was in Vegreville uh, with the Inatech, and, and the third site was in the Peace. But we had a significantly higher yield on our only our peas, and it was about a 30% yield advantage on our peas that were deep banded fertilizer the year before. So that's that's not anything to shake a stick at. Our overall yields were pretty small, but um, I still found that really quite interesting. In canola and in wheat, we saw no yield difference, so they were not significantly different. And that again, like we talked about earlier, not necessarily a bad result. We also came back and tested the soil and we tested the nutrient content of the plants and we looked at whether there was more nutrient uptake in the deep banded versus the shallow banded and we did see some results on that. For peas example, I told you that we had a yield advantage. Our phosphorus uptake in the seed was significantly higher when it was deep banded. And, and that looks like it was almost about a 20 to 25% difference as well. So that means that, that not only is that ph phosphorus resulting in yields, it's actually resulting in more phosphorus within the seed. So that that's, has a, a better chance of uptake. So when I showed you down at that soil pit there, you got to imagine that that band of phosphorus is really at a nice spot where it can actually sit in moisture. If there's no moisture, it cannot get into soil solution, cannot be taken up by the plant. And I think that that's what this result is showing us. Let's see, I just got to check my big data sheets. We did see that same uptake difference in peas only with, with potassium. So I said that we have a lot of potassium in the background soil. I was quite surprised to see that we actually did get still more potassium in the seed with deep banding. So whether it resulted in any kind of yield impact, it was impacting uh, the, the crop growth. Yes. Yeah, so in 2018 was when we did the deep banding and we only did it once three times or three three times the normal fertilizer rate. So how are you applying the stuff that's in front one year versus the nutrients? We're um were we side banding it or with the seed? Uh it depended on what it was. So if it was safe we put it with the seed. So uh yeah. the boss at thirty pounds would have just gone. It was just banded, yeah, with the seed. Any any questions so far? Oh, right in front of me. Just out of curiosity, are you going to uh, do an irrigate raising to see if that deep end of copper has uh, any effect? So the question was whether the deep banding of the copper would have any impact on, on ergot. We haven't seen any ergot in any of our trials, so I think it'd be tough to make that evaluation. And it would only probably show up if you had the right circumstances too. I know studying things like ergot and other diseases, anytime you try to study it, they don't show up and, and vice versa. So are we, am I able to move over to the strip till machine? That's okay. Come on over, just gonna have a quick talk about this strip till machine, which I know some of you have seen before. So we didn't actually have the strip till machine when we did this study, but it would have been the perfect implement. This machine is actually set up on 15 inch row spacing. So I think this probably could work as a deep banding uh, implement for our small grains. In a sense, it'd be like mid-row banding. So you could mid-row deep band uh, your phosphorus with an implement like this. I think it is possible to use your seed drills as well. So if you've got a hole opener and you've got RTK guidance and all that, it, I think you could simply do it like fall fertilizing. And I think fall would be the best bet. We've been looking into strip tillage a fair bit lately out of interest in our corn trials. And uh, corn is sort of expanding its acres here. But then I've also heard a lot of folks were interested even for canola. So, you know, there's so much residue in, in a lot of fields and getting perfect seed placement is always, always a challenge. So essentially this machine could be equipped with either a granular 
applicator or a liquid applicator. <coughs> it can be set down, it, it basically tills the soil with a, with a hole opener. It's got a residue manager that helps move the residue and then it's got a, a nice batter wheel at the back that kind of smooths things out. So while you're doing this, you, you end up, so with a, if you were coming in with a planter, for example, and that's why we're also interested in possibly studying this with the planter, because um, a lot of folks are moving to that 15 inch row spacing planter with canola. So if you deep banded your fertilizer with an implement like this, you'd have a really nice seed bed to go into your canola the, the next year, and then probably follow that up with a wheat or a pea, something like that. I think I've actually covered what I wanted to cover. So if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to discuss it with you. Any questions from online? I'm happy to move on if you are. All right, thanks so much and let's load up. I had maybe one comment, Ken, that I just thought of. Um, you had mentioned that when we went in our first time, it kind of loosens up the soil by doing all that deep banding. And when I walk by, I can actually still visually pick out the, the plots that we need banded. So if you look here, <coughs> this plot here, this plot here, you can tell they were deep banded. There's almost yeah. like a... So Mike was just saying that he noted that even three years later, he can still see the ridges that we made when we did the deep banding. And, and I think when we did that with our, our whole opener, we probably should have considered rolling it or something like that. as far as the positioning and location. So the, for the live folks, I guess you did hear Jamie, any advantage to going directly over? Um, I think because we have guidance systems, we probably could. I don't know that it's absolutely necessary. I think the root systems are able to move uh, and find those fertilizer bands fairly well. So I don't, I don't really have a straight answer to that, but my, my guess is I don't think so. All right, let's keep rolling.